who has uh, prepared for this specific presentation. And uh, in the 1930s, over 2,300 formerly enslaved African Americans were interviewed by members of the Federal Writers Project a New Deal agency in the Works Progress Administration, or what they call the WPA, uh, during the Great Depression. At age 25, when the Civil War ended in 1865, Arnold Gragston moved to Detroit, Michigan, soon after his escape from slavery. He was interviewed at the age of 97 in Florida while visiting a relative, the president of Hungerford, that's Hungerford, College in Eatonville, an African American town founded in 1886. Excerpts of Arnold Gragston's narrative are performed here today by John Hafford. John, you have the floor. Now, most slaves didn't know when they was born, but see, I did. I was born on Christmas morn in 1840. I was a grown man before I finally got my freedom, but before I did, I helped lots of others get there. Lord only knows how many. Might have been as many as two or three hundred, but it was way more than a hundred I know for sure. I was born on a plantation of Mr. Jack Tabb in Mason County, Kentucky, just across from the High River. It was because he used to let me go around in the day and night so much that I got to be the one to take the runaway slaves across the river. But now I didn't know I was going to get mixed up in anything like that until one special night. I went courting at another plantation. I went to this old woman's house she said she had this real pretty girl and would I take her across the river to the free state of Ohio. I got scared. I backed out in a hurry. But then I saw that girl. <laughs> Wasn't long before I was listening to where to take her and where to leave her on the other side. Now I don't know how I rode that boat across the river. The current was strong and I was trembling and I couldn't see a thing in the dark. But I felt that girl's eyes. Well, it was a long time now. I can't tell you how long it was, but I can tell you it was a long time rowing and I'm worrying, but then it was a short time too, because as soon as I did get across the river, that big eyed girl was gone. Well, pretty soon, I saw a tall light. I remember the old woman said, when you see the light, row up to it. So I did. And when I got up to it, two men reached out and grabbed her. I started praying and just trembling all over again. And then one one reached and grabbed my arm. And I just fell down inside me. The Lord done just got ready for me. Is your hungry boy? It's what he asked me. And if you hadn't been holding on to me, I think I'd have fell back into the river. Well, that was my first trip. It took me a long time to get over my scared feelings, but I finally did. And pretty soon I was taking two and three and sometimes a whole boatload. It got so I'd make two and three trips a month. Now I never saw my passengers after that first trip. We'd always be by the black night of the moon in an open field or in a cabin without a single light. I'd always start with, what you say? And they'd have to say the password, Menar. Now I don't know what it meant, but I was told it was something in the Bible and they'd have to say it before we go any further. So at this time, before y'all go any further, wanna encourage you to walk that path Repeat Manar after me on three. One, two, three, Manar. I want you to continue with your journey today. And thank you all for coming. Thank you.